Over the past few months, the M1 Mac Mini has quickly become my M1 and only because the impact it's had on my video editing and streaming workflow has been anything but mini. And as you probably know, I'm typically not a computer review channel. I don't really make computer related videos, but the fact that this little thing right here, this is the least expensive computer I've ever purchased. And it's also the most powerful computer I've ever purchased. I'm not gonna do a technical computer review because there are people who are just pros at that. The reason that I'm making this video is because the effect that this thing has had on my workflow is ridiculous. And if you have a similar workflow to me, you do a lot of video editing, streaming, that sort of stuff, and you're kind of wondering, are those new M1 computers worth it? The answer is absolutely yes. And this is the base, base model, the cheapest Apple computer you can buy. It's the 256 gigabyte hard drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, and the stuff that I've been able to do with this. Look how, this is a whole freaking desktop computer. It's ridiculous. The stuff that I've been able to do with this is, it's unreal, so we'll kind of show you some examples of that, tell you about it, and also explain why I got it in the first place. Because as you might know, the 16-inch MacBook Pro has been my main computer since its release, and this is the most expensive and was the most powerful computer I'd ever had. But the problem with it is that it is very loud. And over the past year, since my entire job has switched to being, you know, teaching my classes on Zoom, I've been doing so many more podcasts and streams. Literally, as soon as I open the Zoom app, the fans start going crazy on this computer. It sounds like it's gonna launch itself into orbit. I'll show you right now. So we'll go in here. I'm not playing with the audio or anything. I will open up Zoom. And this is my typical setup when I'm teaching my classes or doing a stream is I have Ecamm Live open and it's usually running through Zoom. All right, so it's been about a minute. I hadn't used this computer at all today, so it was cold. Once I've got Zoom and Ecamm open, it's starting to warm up, the fans are turning on. So now pretty much no matter what I'm doing throughout the day, the computer is going to be revving up its fans. Sometimes they're not super, super loud and sometimes it's ridiculous. I've literally been in a different room and my wife Heather and I look at each other like, what's that sound? And we realize it's just the computer like running the screensaver. And that can be really frustrating when I'm trying to do anything that involves audio. It got to the point where I just have my external display and then I would just hide my computer under the desk to try to block out some of the noise. But that's not super practical. And so, after almost a year of working from home with this sound happening constantly, when this is what you do all day, every day, it just got frustrating. So I thought my solution was, why don't I just get the cheapest Mac mini and this can be my streaming computer because it's supposed to be much quieter. So I can use this for all my streams and then this, which is more powerful, can be my editing computer. Well, it took about less than a week for this just to become my main computer, and now I actually feel guilty for how little I use this one. So let's shut it down and turn off this fan noise here. Even this mat right now where the MacBook was is like super warm. This thing always stays completely cool to the touch. I know the fan's on because there's a vent in the back, and if I reach my hand behind it, I can feel air coming out, but you cannot hear it. And one of the benefits you might know is that the Mac Mini has a few more ports than the current M1 MacBooks. So you've got gigabit ethernet, two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, an HDMI port, two USB type A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter output. It's not the largest amount of IO ever, but I don't see a problem with it. It works pretty well. What I typically have is my external display connected via one of the Thunderbolt ports. I have a hub connected into the other. And then I've got the Rodecaster and the A10 Mini plugged into the USB-A ports. I've got speakers or headphones obviously going out of the headphone jack. There is a built-in speaker, but it's really bad. It's like the quality of a cell phone from 12 years ago. But sometimes I'll still need to connect other things like hard drives. And so I got this guy here, which you might have seen these docks that are made for the Mac Mini. This is a, a brand called Hagbis, I think. And... I hacked this for a while now, and it works really well. So, a couple things about it. It's a totally ridiculous name. That The new Hagbis. Did you hear Tom has the new Hagbis? Like the 2021 Hagbis? Yeah. Whew. 
They do make a silver version that matches the Mac Mini, but it was out of stock, so I just got the space gray one. And the idea is that it sits right on top of the Mac Mini, and then you've got two more USB-A ports, you've got two USB 3.0 ports, you've got a SD card slot and a micro SD card slot, and then under it, there's a little port where you can install an internal SSD. And I think this costs about $70. It kind of goes in and out of stock on Amazon, so the price fluctuates as well. So I just put a SanDisk SSD in there. This is a one terabyte, it's about $100, but this made a lot more sense to me than upgrading the memory in the computer. The eight gigs of RAM has been more than enough for me, which is crazy because that computer, my MacBook Pro, is 16 gigs of RAM, and I always thought, well, my next computer is gonna be at least 32, if not 64. Nope, it was eight. <laughs> and if you have the budget for the 16 gigs of RAM, it's probably worth it. But as you'll see in a second, the stuff that the eight gigabyte can handle, like, it's more than any reasonable human who's buying a Mac mini would probably need. Of course, your money's your money, your budget's your budget, but I found it was a lot cheaper to just do this, and then I just basically edit off of this. The only stuff that lives on my computer's hard drive are applications and a few super important files. This just shows up, you know, it's a little hard drive on the desktop. When you wake the computer, it's right there. It works super well. Let me put this bottom part back on so I don't lose all these little screws. Now there are only two problems I've had with this thing so far. One of them is very minor. On the back there's the USB-C port that connects to the computer. Maybe like three times in the past two and a half months that I've had this computer, it has just not shown up when I wake the computer from sleep and the solution is just to unplug it, plug it back in, and then it shows up right away. The other issue is just, I don't like having it on top of the Mac Mini. I don't know, for some reason I just don't. And so my thought was, well, I'll put it under the Mac Mini and then everything is fine. But, the back of the Mac Mini here is plastic, and that's where I think there's some antenna signals and things happening. And then the bottom of it also has this plastic circle. And I think this is also where some, you know, like the Wi-Fi antenna, the Bluetooth antenna, stuff like that is. When you put that like this, I've noticed it can cause some interference. I haven't had any of the Bluetooth connection issues with the Mac Mini that some people have talked about, but I've noticed when I had the Mac Mini on here, my mouse would start like being jumpy and laggy and, and weird. It, it stayed connected, but it was just like slow and jittery. And then as soon as I separated these, it was fine and then put it back and it happened again. So I think the metal from this enclosure interferes with this and anyway, I just keep them side by side on my desk now and, and it's fine. So what I wanna do right now is basically just try and overload this computer in a way that you would probably never really do in real life. We'll start a screen recording, which always takes extra memory on my MacBook. Whenever I do screen recordings, the fans kick in. And then if I'm doing a voiceover with the screen recording, it just messes everything up. It's really frustrating. All right, so I've got Ecamm up. I've got a screen recording going. I'm gonna open up Final Cut Pro. And again, I just rebooted the computer, so nothing is, is preloaded. I'm gonna open up Chrome, because I always have Chrome open with a whole bunch of tabs. Let's see, open Zoom, because again, Ecamm and Zoom are my main combos. And the camera's running into the A10 Mini into Zoom, so now I have started a Zoom meeting. Zoom's recording. Let's, why not record with Ecamm Live also? So Ecamm's gonna be recording. Zoom is recording, we've got 14 Chrome tabs open. I'm doing a screen recording in QuickTime. Everything so far seems to be working well. Let's open up Final Cut. Uh, let's start a new project. I'm gonna call this project Ridiculous because this is ridiculous and we'll make it uh, 4K. So we're gonna do a 4K project. Boom, got my timeline up. Now I do have a little bit of 4K footage on my external drive. So let's bring some of that in. This is all native 4K. This is what, 24 clips, just gonna drag them straight to the timeline. And now, as you can see, these clips are just playing completely smoothly. There's no lag or anything. It's ridiculous. But let's add some color correction. So I'm gonna go to my little, you know, the LUT that I tend to add to all my stuff. And we'll just add that there. So there we go. As Final Cut is processing a LUT that's being added to 4K footage, 
it's still playing back perfectly smoothly while Ecamm is recording and Zoom is hosting a meeting that it is also recording. But you know what? I think this Final Cut project is looking pretty good. How long is it? It's 15 minutes long, 4K footage. Well, let's just copy and paste it and make that a nice hour. So now we've got an hour of 4K footage here. I think I'm ready to export that. <laughs> there we go. So now I've got a 4K export happening. Um, while that's exporting, I'm gonna do the thing you should never do and still just double check some of my footage, which is still rendering, it's still playing totally smoothly. Ah, but now for that video, I should probably work on a thumbnail. Let's open up some Photoshop real quick. Photoshop is one of the only things that I've seen little bits of lag pop up here and there, and that probably is also because it's not native for the M1 chip yet. It's still running through Rosetta. Still runs faster and better than anything on my old MacBook ever did, but that is where I've seen some lag. I'm noticing now just a little bit of lag in Ecamm. I've never seen this lag before. Ecamm Live is, uh, I don't know, if over here you can see Ecamm is, is not as smooth as it normally would be. Photoshop had an issue opening. I had to force quit it and reopen, but it opened really quick. And now Ecamm is smooth. I don't know where Zoom is. Zoom is over here. Zoom is pretty smooth. Final Cut is still exporting and also playing back perfectly smooth. And now I've got Photoshop up here. I can work on a thumbnail for a video, add some layers, uh, you know, I don't know, resize some things, zoom in and out, move stuff around. This is more than I would ever do at once. Who's gonna like do all of these things at once? Plus I'm also running a screen recording for this video. But let's also open Adobe Audition because maybe I wanna edit some audio too along the way. Why not? So now we've got Adobe Audition. I can add in some audio over here. So Audition is processing some audio. Now I will say, even though this is working pretty well, I definitely would not recommend running all this stuff at once just because you will probably have reliability issues and then also because if you're exporting footage and doing other stuff, sometimes you can have errors. I haven't had any yet on the M1, but every once in a while on my other MacBook, you'd get like a frame of green or something would look kind of glitchy real quick. So it's usually a good idea when you're exporting your video, a real project, let the computer do its thing make sure it, it exports well and then and then jump back in. Now we've got Adobe Audition up and running in addition to Final Cut Pro, in addition to Ecamm, in addition to Zoom, which is recording, in addition to running a screen capture and Photoshop all at the same time. And everything, as you can see, is running like super smooth. I mean, honestly, these programs by themselves don't run this smoothly on my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Final Cut while exporting again is still playing back video just fine. And if I go through the external drive, open up some of these 4K clips, I can press the space bar and preview them. So now I can even play back other 4K footage. This is eight gigabytes of RAM. I mean, come on. And, oh, and also the computer has not made a sound and it's literally cold to the touch. Not just cool, not just room temperature, but cold metal to the touch. The only way I was able to make the video lag for a few seconds was when I had all that stuff happening and then I tried to open Photoshop. That's when things ground to a halt and Photoshop just didn't open. So I force quit it, reopened it. It opened in about three seconds and then worked fine and everything stopped lagging. So that's the only hiccup I've had. Cheapest computer <laughs> I've ever bought and it can do all that. And that's the base model again, eight gigs of RAM. So sure, if you wanna spend the money on 16, I don't think you'll regret it, but are you realistically gonna do what I just did on a regular basis? Probably not, which would mean that eight gigs is probably okay. I wasn't, I didn't care when it was first announced. I was like, ah, I don't need a new computer, who cares? And then I am absolutely sold on this. So much so actually that my wife Heather now has a matching M1 Mac mini in her office, same base model specs, and it has had the same effect on her workflow. So we each have an M1 Mac mini. We could call them our <laughs> M&Ms. So if you've been on the fence about whether or not to invest in one of the M1 Macs and you have a workflow that's at all similar to mine, I say go for it. I did run Geekbench tests when I first got it and the M1 Mac mini outperformed the 16 inch in the computing tests. 
but the 16 inch outperformed the Mac mini in the graphic tests, which makes sense because it has a dedicated graphics card, but I'm not even including that in this video because I don't really care. Because even though the, the 16 inch MacBook outperformed the Mac mini in the graphics test, I can tell you from using it, the M1 outperforms the MacBook Pro. It beats it in, in literally every way other than having a beautiful built-in display and that 16 inch screen is, is the nicest display I've ever had. This is my old computer. This is my 2013 13 inch MacBook Pro. Barring the years of experience I had with this computer working really well, I can easily say that the M1 Mac Mini is my favorite computer. And I already did have a display, I already had keyboard, already had mouse, so I didn't have to spend money on that stuff. I just spent money on the external dock, the hard drive to go in the dock, and that's it. I didn't have to, to spend money on anything else. So it really made sense financially for me and the amount of friction that it reduced in my workflow, oh my gosh, it's so incredibly worth it. So if you have a workflow like me, I hope this showed you just how powerful this M1 Mac Mini is. There is absolutely nothing mini about the massive power in that Mac. Maxive power, that's right, maximize the power.